Hi, and welcome to Code Corner. This is a video series we do at Mayfield Renewables where we talk about codes and standards as they relate to solar and solar plus storage industries. And today I'm going to jump into the 2023 NEC and specifically talk about the calculation of maximum circuit current. This is going to apply to our PV systems, and we're going to look at really in this case we'll focus in on three different circuits that we have to calculate that maximum current. And this is setting us up for understanding our conductor sizing and our overcurrent protection sizing. So it's a process when you go through and do the whole thing, it, you know, it's multi-step and so there's a lot to it. So I'm just going to break down this very what I would call the first part of it right here to help understand understand what the requirements are. So first off, talking about this calculation of the maximum circuit current, we are going to define the maximum circuit current by one of the methods in either A, 8A1 or 8A2. Today I'm just going to talk about 8A1, 8A2 we have separate videos on, we've talked about in the past, uh, and I'm sure we'll talk more about it in the future, but today we're just going to focus on A1. And then when you get into A1, there's actually multiple subparts. So we're gonna, that's why we're gonna break down those and just talk about those today. So the maximum current for the PV system circuits, that's defined in 690.8A1. And so that is our circuits straight from our PV modules to whatever our, maybe our inverter is, what our, our DC to DC converter or something like that, that is what we're talking about with our PV, um, PV system circuits in this very specific case. And you see here on the language, it talks about going A1, A1A through A1C. So let's break those down uh, step by step. First off is A1A, and A1A actually is broken into two subparts from there even. I'm just going to talk about the first one. Uh, I'll touch on the second one so you understand what it is or how to apply it. But this first correction factor that we're going to apply is to our PV system short circuit current value. And so on this slide, we're showing you a spec sheet from a PV module manufacturer. We see there on the right hand side of that, uh, that bubble blowout there is it's 11.74 amps is the rated short circuit current, so at standard test conditions. What A1A1 is saying is we're gonna take that value, multiply it by 125%, and that becomes our maximum system, our maximum circuit value. That 125% is taking into account that our PV modules will put out as much current as what as bright as the sun is, and straight PV modules without any electronic device on the output of those, they are gonna put out whatever the, the sun allows for. So edge of cloud effect, uh, reflectance from snow, or things like that will potentially increase the amount of current that the PV modules are producing. That, that's what this value is doing. It's saying our PV modules will be at the, at the mercy of how bright the sun is. So we're gonna give a correction factor saying 125%, above standard test conditions, that defines our maximum current. That language, that term maximum current is gonna show up again later in 8B and in, in, in um, 9 for overcurrent protection. So we need to define it. And I encourage people to go through this step by step. Don't try and jump ahead or anything like that when applying correction factors because the risk you run there is actually provide, excuse me, of putting too many correction factors onto your calculations and ultimately oversizing your wire potentially. So this is the first one, multiply by 125%. We'll talk in a future video about B and how to apply these values. But right now just know that maximum current is what we're trying to get after. And this is how you're gonna get it for your PV source circuits in this case. As I mentioned, there is actually an A1A2 as well. And the second one, second part of doing that calculation for the maximum circuit current in A1, A2 is allowed, it allows you to do some modeling and use uh, a system, a modeling program to 
determine what the maximum current value is for your location for your installation. So you would take in Tilton, um, Tilton as Tilton orientation, for example, you would take into account location. There's a lot of different variables that can go into it that will return what the maximum circuit current is. So that's only available for systems over 100 kilowatts. And so it's likely going to be something that you're doing for larger scale systems. So those are your two options for defining your source circuit maximum current. This being the, the absolute uh, most common way of just taking short circuit current times 1.25. And so that's how we're going to get to that value. Moving through A1, we move into A1B. And A1B talks about DC to DC converter circuit current. And this one is relatively simple. And you see here, the maximum current shall be the sum of parallel connected DC to DC converter continuous output current ratings. So what this is telling us is, in this case, this image, we have PV modules. Those source circuits are connected to the DC to DC converters. Those DC to DC converters are then wired up. The output of those go to the inverter. So the circuit from the DC to DC converters to the inverter in this case is the maximum current is gonna be defined by the sum of the parallel circuits connected together and whatever that rating is from the DC to DC converter manufacturer. So if they say maximum output current is 18 amps, that's the maximum value. We're not concerned, we don't have to worry about these reflectance, edge of cloud, those kinds of adders to this specific circuit because the manufacturer of those DC to DC converters has listed it to be a certain, a specific amount of current, maximum current output. So even if there is an edge of cloud effect, even if there is some increased irradiance on the PV side, the DC to DC converters are gonna limit the current that can pass through them based on what their UL listing is. So it's important to understand what that is. Look at that, look at the specific manufacturer you're using, understand how they're passing the current through and controlling it and applying that value properly. So you don't, again, you're not applying 125% here because that's already built into the listing. That's already built into how the, the device is made and, and how it operates. Similar to DC to DC converters, the inverter output circuit is going to be calculated essentially the same way. We're gonna look at what the maximum current is that the, mod, excuse me, the inverter manufacturer in this case says its continuous output current is, and that is by definition the maximum output current. So again, no 1.25 factor, same logic behind that. We could have PV on the input side with or without DC to DC converters, quite honestly. PV on the input side, and the output is gonna be from the inverter, whatever its maximum ability is. Even if there's edge of cloud effect, again, current spikes on the input side of the inverter, the output is, it's only what it's rated for. So no 125% here yet. When we get into B, again in that future video, and when we get into nine, excuse me, when we get into 690.8B, I should be clear, and when we get into 690.9, so 8B talks about the, the circuit sizing, and nine talks about the overcurrent devices. We will have some correction factors to apply there, but not yet, We've, we're just defining maximum current under 8A. This is an area where I know people multiply by 1.25 a lot and they sometimes they over apply it. So that's why I'm saying take it step by step and look at each one. All right, so that's the 690.8A1 section. Just wanted to go through that. This is a glimpse of what we talk about, how we go through our National Electrical Code class for PV systems. So we have a full nine hour course available. This is just one part of it. So if this is the kind of information that you find useful and, and wanna learn more about applying the 2023 code to our PV systems, uh, I recommend taking a look at that course and seeing if it's something that can help you. And then finally, love questions and comments. You know, if, the, if you have a question on this specific video or other videos for that matter, or if you have a suggestion even for a future Code Corner, we'd love to hear from you. So you can reach out to us in these ways and you know, we'd love to interact with you and, and hear how we might be able to help you.